This is the beginning. OK, so that's pretty obvious. But this beginning actually comes at the end. It's the beginning of the new era in All Black Rugby, which coincidentally it comes at the end of the old era. So that's where we start at the beginning of the end before the beginning. It's all quite simple, really. Everybody's a part of the same game Whatever your side or whatever your fame Don't put yourself down Cause we're glad that you came To get the rough sea Life's still a breeze Life's still a breeze Life's still a breeze Life's still a breeze <laughs> Not a bad idea this, having the parade before the World Cup, just in case things don't work out quite the way everyone expects. And expect they certainly do. The parade down Queen Street's a chance for the silent majority to make a bit of noise. An opportunity to show the All Blacks that they have plenty of support as they prepare for the World Cup. But support the team can't do without. But it's also a reminder of what everyone's come to expect from the All Blacks these days. Total success. When I go over there, when the team goes over there, we can just think back to this day and lift us another 10%. Thanks. Come on, Kamo. Now to round the day off, another blast of that song, which had already been beaten into the nation's subconscious. But at least the words aren't too far removed from the truth. I mean, a few months earlier, who would have thought together you and I referred to Mr Hart and Mr Wiley? Come on, you put the speed on there. Let's get there. Numbers. Two tremendous coaches with different styles, but definitely a similar desire to keep the All Blacks at the top. I might bit wide with the bags, but we weren't depth, any depth on the ball at all. It was all on there. Side, yeah. So we cheated. I change over. First guy kicks, second guy catches it. Goes down to the deck. First guy, go on and pick it up and go again. Okay? I'll pick the naturals. Posty and Inga. Left. Just as they pop, pop, pop. Put it up, put it up, brother. Go, brother. Go, brother. It's your pullback at war. <laughs> Completing the equation is motivation man Jim Blair. The person who turned the phrase fitness guru into a cliche. Fitness. A dirty word as far as Mike Brewer was concerned. The All Black vice captain had problems with a heel injury for much of the season. A vital member of the World Cup campaign, he was confident he'd won the race against time to be fit to take part in the World Cup. But first, he had to wait for the judge's decision. For most players, the hardest part of the medical was filling out the form. I mean, there were some pretty tough questions in there. Write your name. Graham Purvis. Is that the nature? And tick. Like this. Tick. It might be an idea. For Mike Brewer, though, the jokes fell flat. After a series of tough tests, the medical panel decided the heel hadn't healed enough. Despite strong requests from the coaches, Brewer was ruled out of the cup. There's been a, a release on the Michael Brewer um, not being able to travel with the team, and that's a sad one for the whole of the, whole of the squad. Um, very hard on me, and very hard on Michael Brewer too, I might add. And Michael Brewer, he's made a statement that, um, that he's disappointed naturally, and he, um, 
but he's 100% behind the team and um, he realises after consultations with a, with a panel of doctors last night that he wouldn't be able to give it 100 and, um, for the period of the World Cup. And um, Michael Brewer is that sort of person that if uh, he can't give it 100, it's not Michael Brewer. So. A tough blow to the side on the eve of their departure. Still, life must go on for the warm-up match against the Barbarians. A match where the All Blacks were looking to reveal the type of play they wanted in the World Cup. Good quick ball from the Fords, but the pace outside finishing things off. It was to be some of the best rugby seen in this country since the last World Cup. Bishop was there again. Fired it away to Kerwin. Had to be a bit forward. Here's Gary Whitten. The supporters there as he pops it back. Now Bishop away to Fox. Opening up again. McCahill. Lovely pass to Innes. Here's a go. Right to Timmy who must score. What a good try. Swinging pass by Fox. Look at that from McCarthy to Kevin. And Kevin looking like the Kevin of all. He gets there. <laughs> and Zinzan Brook is away. Up to the 22. The little delay. And run by Zinzan Brook. What a late charge now in the crowd. Certainly a night to remember. Preston. Good run. Jones. Superb. Lovely ball for Basham. It's a running chance. Innes, he's outside the 22. He backs himself to go. Zinzan Brook. Spinning wide. Basham. Timu is there. 22 metre line. Richard Lowe comes into support. Down on the floor. Ian Jones spin passes. Fox. Innes to McCarhill. Fox again, Terry Wright, everybody's in the game, the press is coming on the Reds, Ian Jones and Michael Jones, what a try, what a comeback, what a special moment. The game also reminded us of some other important points, like how much we'd miss Michael Jones on Sundays, how much we'd miss good refereeing on most days, and the reminder that Terry Wright can get injured, things to remember for the future. Still, plenty of reasons for a positive mood as the All Blacks prepared to take off for England. And while it wasn't quite the right time yet to crack open the champagne and make merry, uh, sorry, you're know, wrong sort of merry, mate, it didn't do any harm to check out the Moe, just in case. Just on. How about sort of laughing? Really happy, really good. <laughs> <laughs> so, as the Leeds Rugby League team, Sorry, I mean the All Blacks, an easy mistake to make these days. In New Zealand, their way to London, expectations were high. Despite a few problems earlier in the season, it was clear the defending world champions weren't going all this way to surrender their crown without a fight. The World Cup's about pressure, and the team that can handle the mental pressure will be, uh, and it's a very important factor in the World Cup. And I think the All Blacks uh, have shown that over many years, that they do have that capacity. Um, they recognise how difficult the challenge is this year. Uh, their preparation hasn't been possibly as ideal as most would like it, but uh, they know the challenge is ahead of them. And uh, I think if they can uh, build on that mental capacity and uh, use their support game, they're going to be a very strong side to be. I believe, and people have said, how does this team compare with, with the 87 side? Well, there's the number of uh, players that played in that World Cup then. They've got the experience. We've had younger players come on. And we hope that they'll also come into it the same as it did in 87. So uh, perhaps the gap's closed a wee bit. If the gap has closed, it's, I would say, from what other countries have learnt on the way we've approached the game. So I just think it's going to be a very good tournament. This <laughs> here's got to stay down, so I need a lot of gel. OK, so perhaps Colin Meads and the greats of the past never had to worry too much about hair gel. But times have changed. I wonder if anyone else is wearing these dinner suits. And for this tour, monkey suits were part of the kit. So I said you had to have the writing up the right way. 
Just when you worked out the old tie, they give you one of these to confuse matters. Fit, just. Ooh. They wouldn't be out enough, those things. Yeah. Well, good. if the Poms aren't happy with this, they won't be happy with anything. <laughs> All blacks, they look more like pot black in this get-up. Still, it's important to look sharp for all the official dinners they seem to enjoy so much over here. And while they aren't usually designed to be much fun, like anything, they are what you make of them. But there isn't too much grief as the dinners make way for some rugby. And the preparation to try and win the World Cup a second time begins in earnest. Not surprisingly, there's a fair bit of interest in the All Blacks build-up for the World Cup opener against England. Everyone seems to want to know how good the All Blacks of 91 are going to be. And also, whether John Hart and Alex Wiley actually talk to each other. Oh, look, they do. Oh, it's helpful. Cut! That's it, that's good, that's good. Steady Black, come here! Wiley! Come on, come on, take it down. Hold that, hold that! Sing it down, sing it. And Wiley! Nice, 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 nice. Trainings are going pretty well. As the jet lag goes, the intensity starts to pick up. Of course, to watch any of this, you have to pay two pounds to the host London Irish Club. You certainly have an eye for making a quick buck or two. Or should that now be a quick zinzan? Oh. Oh. The hosts were very good to the team, however. It was so nice of them to leave a box of balloons lying around to help everyone relax. And also to conduct a few science experiments. Take one balloon and add some Coca-Cola. Check closely for any leakage. <laughs> and find a fall guy. <laughs> the Odlands Hotel was also welcomed by the team, though no one could quite work out why they put the obstacle course around the tennis court. Makes it a bit more of a challenge, I suppose. Excellent. Bolt! Jeez, uh, that's a bloody... <laughs> What's those carbs? Oh! oh! <laughs> Could you go and get that ball for us, please? Recreation, an important part of any match build-up to help relieve some of the pressure. Oh, you... Pass over that camera, will you? <laughs> Less than scratch it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> You just get a bit of cow shit and throw it there. <laughs> Although the idea of parking cars in the middle of the golf course did seem a bit silly. You yeah, didn't. There's a real one. You <laughs> lost the ball, though. That's, what, that's the worst thing, you lost the ball. Oh, haven't seen anything. Hey. <laughs> that's that's nice. Hey, JP. Your car. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, shit. Oh, I can't see anything. And get a big white cult pen because Posty has to sign his dent. Oh, these are accidents. Well, you know, what are you going to do about it, mate? Well, you know where we are, so... <laughs> that helps me. I live about 120 miles from here. Uh, you do? You yeah, drive all the way from here? Pop down here. Oh, <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> you stay home. You well, if I hadn't been on the phone, I'd never known it happened. You have to say, you have to it was right. later suggested that the high cost hey. of fixing the dent was enough to drive a player to rugby league. What, what else can I do? So I'd send the bill. I thought you said send the ball. <laughs> send the ball. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about it, mate. Oh, don't worry about it. Happened at sea. Get him back! Get him back! All fun aside, the main job at hand was getting closer as the All Blacks put the finishing touches to the moves they hoped would break the England defence. All that remained now was a few last-minute traditions, like the pre-match haircut. What does it look like? What do you reckon? The line-out drills in the quiet of the hotel grounds. And the goal kicker's survey of the local conditions. Twickenham was about to come alive, and so too was the World Cup.
come the world champions. Here come the All Blacks, led on by their captain, Gary Wetton. After hearing everyone talk about this matchup for years, this was a game the All Blacks were just dying to get underway. And early on, they had a few surprises for the much publicised English power game. Oh, that was a great scrum, though, by New Zealand. It really was. I mean, that must surprise England psychologically. Good driving play by the All Black forwards. They've made 15 to 20 metres so far. But despite a strong first half showing, New Zealand's points were confined to those from Grant Fox's boots, leaving us just behind at half time. But before the English could get too comfortable, from the start of the second half, the All Blacks quickened the pace to see if England could keep up. Johnny Timu! Support from his captain, Fox. McCahill taking it forward. Lovely run by McCahill, supported by Jones. Michael Jones. And Webb takes a risk, throws his boot at the ball. Strong marking by England outside the 22. Kerwin. He's got Fitzpatrick waiting in the wings, as he's done so often. Fox. Delivers it up for McCarhill this time. Kerwin has been involved a lot today and he's made some telling runs. One more telling run and England was a team running out of hope for a share of the glory from this match. Pops it up nicely for Basher. Basher across to Kerwin. He's away. He's got support from Joe. Michael Jones. First try of the tournament. A move called from the scrum. Bash came round and he threw the wide pass. I saw Odie come up and I sort of drifted off the pass. I was quite lucky to get it. And then I thought I was going to get, it, get there myself and... Um, the fullback obviously grabbed me and I turned inside and there was Jonesy, so I just flicked him. I could just see where JK was going to get to and um, I was just waiting for the pass and JK, like good mate he is, gave me the pass and um, it was just a matter of um, you know, finishing it off. It's pretty straightforward. The game is over and the opening of the Rugby World Cup of 91 sees Alex Wiley and John Hart's all black team win by 18 to 12 over England. It's up and running now. I mean, um, we always say that when you're on tour that it never starts until you've played the first game. Well, now the first game's under our belt. Um, you know, we had a victory. Um, the show's on the road. So guys can get into their work now. We know, um, we know what to expect. A um, couple of hard games against USA and Italy to come up. Um, so now it's really, you know, it's the show's on the road, down to some hard work and away we go. Um, and what we'd like to do is to start with her get... The beginning of every challenge programme starts with her getting the challenge in an unusual place. And we thought the middle of a scrum would be perfect. Well, go down. Doc, now be strong in the middle. What this is all about is the blonde lady is a British television person who likes to be seen in unusual places. So they thought an all-black scrum and good humour after beating England was the ideal spot. Where are you? Where's the other ball? Where's your ball? He's he he putting it from this side. I'll do it from this side. <laughs> you do it from this oh, side. Oh, 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 her name is Annika Rice and she's not usually known for incisive questioning. Have you ever met Kylie Minogue? No, I haven't actually. The boys tried to impress with a bit of serenading, but it wasn't quite working. Fortunately, when in doubt, it's time for the old standard. Gets them every time. The next stop is a place called Old Slaughter on the way to prepare for the game against USA, which most think will be a slaughter. But there are a couple of casualties from the English game. I'm only doing this because on most tours I break down. <laughs> hey, what this leg gets sore. That's a bad smell, isn't it? And while some of the non-experts are saying New Zealand could beat the Americans on one leg, no one is really that keen to try. Uh, Sean, Sean, you've left him behind. Sean? Oh, well. It turns out to be a simply delightful lunch in one of those simply delightful English settings. 
before retiring to the drawing room. Where, after beating each other up, <laughs> there's a chance to catch up on the opposition. So it's Lisandro Arpizzo then with the kickoff. Deep into Australian territory, taken by David Campesi. David Campesi. Be interesting to see what sort of tournament he has this time. Here's looking at you, kid. That's Jock Hobbs, the former All Black captain, now represents Mizuno, the All Blacks boot supplier. But for JK, the boots will be off for the USA game, the ankle he injured against England, needing a rest. However, he's not the only one hopping around at the moment. Seems JK's inspired Jim Blair to yet another training variation, hopping mad, which in the future could well become another free kick move for North Harbour. Yeah. Keep going. Awesome. Keep it going. You're enjoying this battle. Keep it going. Keep going. Keep going. Good. Jim. 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 Keep going. Keep going, Jim. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Come on, boys. Keep, keep going. going. Sprint to the water. Go. <laughs> Do five press ups. Finish with your chest on the ground. Lift up an inch. Hold it. An inch, Ginge. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Foxy, yeah. Ginge, an inch. <laughs> Whoa. Half an inch. Half an inch. An inch, Jason. Half an inch. It winds up, doesn't it? You can take that. It's the one you use for the video. <laughs> Next hotel in Gloucester has plenty of things to do. And while golf is encouraged, the artificial ski slope is officially out of bounds. Oh, no. Oh. Although the way some people play golf, perhaps the ski slope would have been safer. Alan Wedding having an early stroke of luck, finding a ball everyone thought was lost just by his foot. Change colours a little, never. This just sort of fell down here. I'd throw it out of it further, AJ. You'll have a far easier shot. Help! Yours is up in the back of the here. Well, Camo oh. found us. I'd bring that back down on the course. Sure. Find it. One ball, my match ball. Down on the fairway. Yeah. Yeah. Seems the Wet and Jones yeah. combination is charging to an early lead. <laughs> A situation oh. they're quite what? relaxed with. <laughs> but, uh, yes. And while they're playing with a lot of skill. Right, keep going, keep going. Great part, the bounce of the ball is favouring AJ in particular. As for JK, I told you the ski slope was right, safer. There, boys. <laughs> Have a putt back, and golf being such a frustrating game, sooner or later you're going to lose your head. Oh, I've got to have this. Nice. Hey, it's a good shot, Jacob. Is it? Yeah. We'll give you another one from, from here. <laughs> from here. my head. <laughs> so which one are we short of now? That's what I thought of. That was a bit shaky. Oh, is it the four or the...? It was the eight. <laughs> oh, the eight. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Got some time? Have a... Hey, where'd the ball go? Uh, no, it was a good shot. shot. Those not into golf get a chance to visit a local farm. This, by the way, is the local farmhouse. That's Simmental. Yeah, what's this? Um, Simmental over, over Friesian. Yeah. Over a Friesian. Yeah, that's a um, That'll be, uh, in fact, in fact, that's a Friesian. That's a, they've nearly come red, haven't they? Yeah. Um, the family have been here 800 years. These are, these are country gentlemen. Yeah. I mean, they... So we, yeah. We was. They, 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 they ain't, they, I'm sorry, you, you know, yeah. they're the landed gentry. I'm the, I'm the farmer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that, yeah. that's the story. So it was on to the USA game. Most were predicting a good old-fashioned hiding, though to give the Americans credit, that sort of talk was likely to make them even more determined. 
The All Blacks have made a few changes for this game. Graham Purvis playing his first test, giving Richard Lowe a break. Well, John Preston was playing his first test also as All Black first five, while Grant Fox had a rest. It was also the first test appearance for Inga the winger. But for Michael Jones, it was his last match for a while. The rest, bar one, to be played on Sundays. Against the Americans, things started pretty well. Is Andy Earl going towards the post again? Just a couple of metres short. Ball comes back, it's loose. Now Basham. Across to right. Right hitting for the corner again, and Terry Wright. But then the mistakes started to happen. Mistakes creeping into the All Black game. And the All Blacks found the Americans to be fairly committed opposition. Ask Terry Wright. So at half time, the scoreboard was comfortable without being overly impressive. And as the second half moved on, the momentum picked up a little as Pervy celebrated his debut with a try. But if one move summed up the game, it was this one starting a few metres from the try line. Preston. Ennis, long one across, misses Terry Wright. Timu has to go back. John Timu, so good from broken play. Good run here from Timu. Two or three metres up from the line. All Blacks getting there to try and secure the second phase ball. They have Basham across to Tuigamara. What a good pass. The most 50 metres work to finish where it started. So the All Blacks put Michael Jones on ice for a while after a clear-cut victory they weren't entirely happy with. The feeling felt good before the game and we knew what we had to do, but we didn't, we didn't quite put it together when we got out there. And, I mean, we can't blame the conditions. The conditions were good at the end of the day, so it's um, maybe back to the drawing board to think a bit about. I mean, there's small things, the accuracy of the pass and taking your eye off the ball and the catch, and, you know, it's just things we've got to think about and get our heads right. So it was back to the hard work approach. The introduction of more new faces for the next match of the World Cup against Italy. And making his All Black and Test debut, halfback Jason Hewitt. With one other important change, Alan Wetton coming in as bus driver. AJ eventually found his way to the next training session on the way to Leicester. Practice was held at Rugby School, the place where the game was apparently started by a rogue schoolboy. His name? William Weaballis. By the way, that's not him there on the right. And I made a chicken, very, very nice. This is uh, this is where Walter Little will be playing his rugby over the off season. His car, the Mercedes out there, got it on the number plates. The new Spielberg crew, JT and Inga, have their critics, but they're trying to do their best. Obviously, Walter's uh, by the end of this uh, trip, Walter's going to join this uh, club in terms of top and some it. experience. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And what else, Walter? I just thought I'd just um, have an off-season year and. Um, Finger in particular, daring to look where others fear to tread. I have a ride, JK. AJ is obviously such a major success as bus driver that alternative transport is sought for the rest of the journey to Leicester.
To quote the words of the immortal John Shuster, Leicester, here we are. That's all in their country, mate. But there isn't too much time to take in the sights because there's a lot of hard work to be done before taking on the final game in the pool against the Italians. Back two, go. <laughs> Hit it. <coughs> go. <coughs> Hang up. Last week, a couple of times ran up, missed it, didn't you? Just because you were too fast at it. Okay? He's got the ball. Okay? Slow up, then hit him. Go. Good. Okay. Zinni, bag three minus two plus one. Go. Two. Steve McDowell, six times two minus eleven. Go. Low. Go to anyone you like. No, not that one. Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> hit it. Hit it. Hey, hey, hey. Get the bag, though. Get him out. Go. Hit it, Danny. Hit it, Richard. Come on. Hit it, Stevie. Really hurt it, Stevie. Here you hurt it. Hurt it. Get down. Bring him back. Okay, hit it hard. Nicole, come on. Go, Jay. Hit it. 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 Hit it
perhaps that's when we'll, we'll bring out the best in this team, which we really haven't seen yet. Next stop, La Belle France. With the World Cup organisers failing to understand it was a good idea to have the tournament in one country rather than five, the All Blacks flew across the English Channel to France on a day when the cleaners were on strike. Well, hello there once again. It's me, Inga the Ringer, and I'm reporting on Alpha Television New Zealand. And we've just arrived in, what's the name of the airport? De Gaulle. De Gaulle Airport in France, Gaulle. Paris. And what we have noticed around here is it's pretty tidy. So as you can see in the background, it's pretty tidy around here. And apparently the cleaners are on strike. But the week before the next game, the idea is not to get too tense too early. Well, what did you stick that thing? Something was needed to help the team switch off for a day or so before getting back into it. Tennis, not a bad idea. Your commentator, Mr Keith Quinn. Lots of activity at the Lille Tennis Club before the International Celebrity Doubles Championship of the World Cup involving a number of top combinations. And before all major tennis tournament, there's the introduction uh, of the dignitaries to the leading combinations, all done in fluent use of the local language. Some powerful looking combinations here. <laughs> and Boris. <laughs> Can we uh, see the backs, please? <laughs> What are we calling ourselves? Right? What is it? Right. And here we are from the racing club. And one of the favoured combinations, Monsieur Henderson and Monsieur Brooke. <laughs> Get out, Fitzy! This is going to go a little higher. But here's the number one seeds, Monsieur Wiley and Monsieur Hart playing together, the identical twins of world tennis. Put a lot of thought into this. We've got colour coordination. We're very, very keyed up. Each match in the tournament is to be of one set duration, first to 15 points. Appropriate local folk music provided a good backing for the first match with Alan Wetton continuing his fine golf form and taking on to the tennis courts as he and partner Graham yes! Purvis progress spectacularly to the next round. There is some concern about some of the combinations cracking under the pressure. Yes! Brock and Henderson showing good form, they make the most of it. Yeah. I like it. Right. See you later, Chris Boy. Oh, yeah, yeah, thanks a lot, Rick. I mean, uh, Laurie on again already. Meanwhile, Hart and Wiley win their first round match and are looking good at the early stages. But can they keep it up? The old men of the tennis scene. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. So Henderson and Brooke now meet the combination known as the coaches. Never an easy match. It's done to get it wet. We're under pressure with this bow tie. World Championship. The crowd in. Vicious first serve from Wiley. Fault. The second one's a marshmallow. <laughs> Fantastic was what he was going to say about the conditions here at Lille. Brook to serve. Strong four-court play by John Hart. And he's forced the error. So game set to Hart and Wiley, and they go into the next round. <laughs> A shock victory over Henderson and Brooke by Wiley and Hart. And that through to the next stage of this very strong competition. Just shows age is no barrier. Big crowd of celebrities gathering around centre court to watch the next match between Wiley and Hart against Lowe and Carter. Vicious long by Lowe to the back court. A drive by Hart. A volley by Carter. Into the net, more high fives. 
The coaches' combination working well together. Win by two. Seems to be some discussion over the laws. This is just one of a number of protests. The Hart Wiley combination attracts controversy wherever they go. But things don't always go against them. In this next incident, umpire Graham Bashett remembers just who the coaches are when he calls this ball out. The umpire calls consistently. Now the replay will show that the ball was in, just as Graham Bashett will be in when the next All Black team is announced. That was out. <laughs> so Richard Lowe to serve, match point to Hart and Wiley. <laughs> the dream run of Hart and Wiley continues. Now to the final, Hart and Wiley against Philpott and Innes. Here Wiley, a dangerous forehand, good volley at the net by Innes. Powerful shot from Hart, a toss from Philpott. Philpott can play this game. Delicate shot by Wiley. Well, he's not happy. He's not a happy chappy. Co-coach John Hart's not a happy chappy either. The coach's combination showing the signs of wear and tear here. In trouble. Match point to Philpott and Innes. Philpott serves for the match. Good return by Hart on the forehand. Deep from the backcourt. A volley from Wiley. A good one, but it's out. The game is over. The final is over. Craig Innes. And Shane Philpott win the celebrity doubles over our coaches Wiley and Hart. <laughs> Obviously not too impressed with the umpire in that final match there, but a, a good result for two guys that apparently can't work together. If they all went against us, we didn't get one for us. Now you know how we feel. But for tennis champion Shane Philpott, the next day was a downer. Hit with a calf strain at training, just when it seemed he'd be called in at fullback to replace the injured Terry Wright, still struggling with his injured hamstring. And to really top the day off, Grant Fox went down after aggravating his pelvic injury. Other than all that, training was going as well as can be expected. And the search was on for a replacement fullback. John Timu caught the ball, so he was the front runner for the fullback spot, even though he'd never played there before. Okay, so he played at school, but it's not quite the same as test match stuff. I thought it might be on the cards um, with TJ and then really getting hurt at training yesterday, so uh, I was sort of preparing for it. And then Hardy came and saw me last night, and we had a big chat you know, about whether I was going to be confident enough to play there. and. Uh, I told him if you know if, they, if I had to play there, um, I'd obviously go out there and give it my best shot. In the meantime, the call had gone out to a Kapunga farm. Fullbacks required. Kieran Crowley was back in the blacks. Got your suit, mate, your bow tie and everything? I wouldn't have a clue, haven't you? True. How's it going, mate? The All Blacks base in Lille wasn't too far from the First World War killing fields of Flanders, where more than a few New Zealanders had lost their lives. So it seemed only right that the All Blacks should pay their respects. With the French paparazzi there in force. Oh, very good. Seeing the headstones of New Zealand men and boys who had lost their lives here 
a rather sobering experience. Yeah, well, I said there was a while ago that we talked about where one just left school and such and such and he died two years later, so it must have been uh, seven or eight To complete the day, it was back into the snooker suits for a visit to one of France's finest restaurants. Its name immortalised in song. Nothing but the best for this team. Garçon, un Big Mac, s'il vous plaît. Wherever you are, it tastes more or less the same. Nice to be in such familiar surroundings so far away from home. The singing always sounds a lot better when you're actually there. And the wonder of it all is that you just don't realize how much I love you. How much I love you. So the mood is pretty good as the All Blacks prepare for their quarter-final clash against Canada, who have impressed in their early games. But first it's the Samoans turn against Scotland. And there's plenty of support from the All Black camp, as there has been right throughout Samoa's excellent, but not totally unexpected, World Cup adventure. Reputations count for nothing, eh? This is a game where reputations are going to be made. Must be a try. Yes, no question about this one. to be a Samoan and I'm proud to know all those Samoans back in New Samoa and New Zealand and all my friends, my wife, kids and family and all my uh, enemies out there. Cheers mate. Cheers.
This would have to be the greatest thrill of my life, being involved in this team, being over here, playing against players of this caliber, just being involved. It's, um, there's nothing ever that has matched it. Thanks for the support. That's us for coming home. Achievements well worth applauding. For the All Blacks, though, going home was totally unthinkable at this stage. Not to say there wasn't a lot of support at home or in Lille either. The Kiwi fans were there in force on a big weekend for Invercargill. First, local referee David Bishop had won a points decision against Frenchman Daniel Dubrocca. And another of Invercargill's favourite sons, Paul Henderson, was about to take the field in his first World Cup game. A big match in the career of his Otago teammate, John Timu. A fullback for the first time in his life, in a game the All Blacks simply can't afford to lose. But it didn't take too long to sense that in this match, the All Blacks were keen to get their World Cup back on track. is trying the high bomb. Gray is number 11. Picked up by Innes. Timu. John Timu, the fullback, the brand new fullback, is in for the try. One pass from the number eight to the halfback, then to the wing. Let's see what they do. It is going towards the left, but with a little delay, McCarthy gets there. There it is again. Out to McCarthy. McCarthy charging for the line, and uh, over he goes. Zinzan Brook. A cute little move, and the try is down for Zinzan Brook. Well, that's the all-black specialty, isn't it? Well picked up by Basham. Kerwin. Kerwin flying at the corner, and the big guy's in. Lovely pick up by Basham. Nice pass, popped it up. Kerwin running hard on it. Got enormous strength. He's played with a lot of zest and aggression today as Kerwin, and that's a good run-in for the New Zealand right winger. Now here's an overlap for New Zealand. Basham running. Timu outside him. Timu flying for the corner. And how appropriate Timu scores it. The guy certainly deserves a beer after that performance. for every match but um, today especially you know playing in a new position especially in a test match and uh, it was really my first uh, first grade game playing at fullback so I was a bit apprehensive but um, like I said as the game went on I got more confidence behind me. He had a great game didn't he? He, uh, he did everything right his positional play was good and uh, he, he kicked well and then he scored two great tries so uh, a great day for John Timo. He's a very good footballer and, and I guess our faith in him was that he was a good footballer, he is a good footballer, he uh, positionally is sound and he showed that today. It hadn't been a perfect All Black game but the improvement sought for was there and just as importantly they'd qualified for the next match. A semi-final against Australia in Dublin. Always a favourite spot for touring All Black sides.
hold on, I don't want you to get the wrong impression here. The All Blacks only came to this pub to be filmed by a British television crew. It's a setup, honest. They only stayed for a short time. Enjoyable. See, they even got stunt drinkers in. That does look rather good. Just for the cameras, of course. What? A New Zealand song? Have you heard this one before? that Australia beat Ireland and if Australia did beat New Zealand it would be a great kick in the boots for Ireland but no one New Zealand alike I, I tell you talking about being rugged <laughs> you had to be some some team believe me to beat them that they are fantastic there's no doubt about it well they, they speak for themselves look at their record Her eyes, they shone like the word on the streets was that the Irish would probably support the Australians in the semi-final Partly because the Aussies had spent the previous week based in Dublin before their quarter-final cliffhanger against Ireland. It's just like this, is it? Just about. Goes a bit, thanks a Despite bit. reports to the contrary, the All Blacks did in fact do their best to get out amongst the people of Dublin. But the fact that this hospital visit, for instance, received less press coverage than the Wallabies did for walking down the main street, is probably more a tribute to the Australian public relations machine than anything else. On that front, the Australians certainly were well organised. The All Blacks even incorporated a bit of local flavour into their training. But the Gaelic scouts kept their checkbooks to themselves. With Jim Blair constantly trying to think up new ideas to keep training interesting, peanut races were an obvious progression. The idea is to take the peanuts by straw to the plate at the other end. I've got thrones here in Britain. Of course, all this must be done before Steve McDowell eats all the peanuts. Might seem a friendly game, but when the hint of competition is there, the game is played to win. Rita, you watch that, say Rita. Who? Yeah, yeah. You can't do that. Oh, that was one I just said. It didn't drop back. Come on, that's fair enough. It didn't drop back. Leave it on. And victories are celebrated accordingly. Get down! Get down! 
As the week progressed, the serious training started in earnest. There were still a few injury worries. And Ian Jones had added a new concern by twinging his thigh while warming up. Not the ideal preparation for such an important match. TJ's hamstring still wasn't right, and he faced a real uphill battle to be right in time for Sunday's semi-final. Eventually the decision was made. Terry Wright wasn't going to be right. He was out of the semi-final. And that meant the experienced Karen Crowley was called in to take over the fullback's role for the game against Australia. The amount of letters and, and that that I got when I originally missed out was amazing, the support, and I just, you know, hope that I can do it for them now. You know, the people back home have been great, real supportive and that, and um, I'll definitely be trying. Despite the problems, the All Blacks felt they were in pretty good shape going to this match. Sure, they hadn't looked super impressive in some of the early games, but then again, neither had Australia. But they also knew just as they were capable of playing a lot better, so too was Australia. Most felt the semi-final in Dublin in fact pitted the two best teams in the tournament against each other. In fact, some were dubbing the Lansdowne Road clash the true final. But regardless of whether that was correct, the point was indisputable. Only one team from this game would have a chance of winning the cup. Lansdowne Road was to be the Southern Hemisphere's decider. The morning of the match, the focus was on the car park down below, as the All Blacks went through their drills one last time. The time had come. This was not to be a day that belonged to the All Blacks, but to a bloke by the name of David Campisi. Australia in possession yet again. Another good variation from the liner. Minutes before half-time and 13 points to nil down, the All Blacks needed to score here. They couldn't. For Australia, it was the day of the tackle. There was no way the Wallabies were going to give up this lead. best period of play by far. Ball released up now. Low had a go. They've got to give the backs a run. But equally, there was no way the All Blacks were going to give up trying. Bashup takes off on a run. Innes frees it up for Bashup. Chance here for the All Blacks. Crowley back to Bashup again. It's taken away by the Australians. Since then, Brooks straight into the pile driver. Fox, Innes, Kerwin. So the All Blacks decide to run it up. Zinzan Brook, back into Timu. This is good from the All Blacks. Gary Wetton gets into the clear. <laughs> Kerwin has another go. Kerwin through. Up to Crowley. Ball knocked down. 
the dream was over. Australia had won, the All Blacks had not. The World Cup was not going to be theirs this time. I don't know, I just feel numb, you know, you walk into the change room and and you, you try and um, say what happened, but, you know, they're a great side and we're beaten by a very good side, which is uh, quite a good thing, but, you know, I'm just really really sad for for everyone, for, you know, guys that maybe can't um, can't play in the next one. For all the people at home who have supported us, it's, uh, you know, when I walked in, I thought, I'd oh, just imagine everyone switching off the lights and going back to bed, you know, it's, it's hard. I had a tear in my eye, you know, and, and um, I'm still proud to be a New Zealander. We, we've got to go to Cardiff now and, and give it our best shot. I know our guys are disappointed for themselves and the teammates, but uh, and also for the, for the nation back at home. But uh, I know they all gave our best, and, uh, and all we can say is that uh, you know, we'll, we'll try again. If you go and have a look at them in the dressing room, you know, they're spent. So if they give it all, we can't ask for any more, can we? I think we are the best team here. Uh, we hadn't really performed until today, but we, we could still improve. You know, there's a few things we've got to clean up. But um, I think, you know, after four years, we've come a long way. You know, it's a credit to the coaches and everyone else involved in the side. We've got us mentally and, and physically right. All we've got to do now is a team's got to perform to their ability, and that's, that's what we try to do today. We'll hold our head up high and, uh, and we'll, we'll go out there tonight and we'll have a few beers. And tomorrow we've got to say, well, we've got Scotland at, at Cardiff. But it's really sad that, that, that we're not in the um, World Cup final, you know. I've sort of really trained all year to, to play at Twickenham and... And it's just just a real letdown. But um, New Zealanders are, are, are people who can bounce back and we will. Not the happiest of times in the All Black camp. The World Cup had gone to be picked up by Australia a week later. But nothing was to be gained by thinking what might have been. The magnificent era had come to an end. An era where the All Blacks were more than just the holders of the World Cup. For four years, they were the world champions. Oh, no, not a hand-off. <laughs> I love you. Let's go and wear the front row. Wear a white cat in front row. Bad memories of this crowd. Put it right. Too bad. Hi, how are you? Oh, oh, hi. 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 <laughs> what? Kill one? Yeah. Hey. Come on, see him. Get it. Get him on, buddy. Let's see him. Hi, James. o'clock in the morning at Dublin Airport, it all seemed such a long time ago. The only real memory was Australia 16, New Zealand 6. But of course, life must go on. After all, there was still World Cup cricket. It was almost as though you would wake up the next morning, eventually, and it was all just a bad dream. But no such luck, nothing had changed. New Zealand was now hoping 
expect for an Aussie victory in the final. After all, for Australians, they aren't bad blokes. But things were definitely going their way at the moment. The flight to London left on time. The flight to Cardiff for the third and fourth place playoff was, of course, delayed for several hours. An All Black tradition at the end of the tour is to throw all the training balls into the air, and whoever catches one gets to keep it. Of course, this wasn't the end. There was one very important game to play against Scotland. The prize was third or fourth place, but it was worth more than that. The All Blacks were playing for pride. That's definitely a prize worth winning. And with so many young players taking the field, it was a chance to start the new era with what the Leeds Rugby League Club left us. I think maybe the guys themselves feel that um, it's the end of an era. We saw an Australian side, to my liking, very much like the All Blacks were in 1987. Um, and, you know, the guys, we've had a magnificent four years, um, mainly highs. I mean, I think in that time there's been 35 tests, 31 wins, one draw, three losses, which is a great record in anyone's book. Um, all those losses are to Australia. <laughs> Ironically for me personally, the, the loss that hurt the least was actually the one at Lansdowne Road. It probably should be um, the one that hurt the most given that it was a World Cup semi-final. But in the other two matches we lost them, I felt we let ourselves down. We didn't play well. Um, you know, we gave it everything we had, you know, 110% on Sunday. Um, we got beaten by a better rugby team. The challenge was for the All Blacks to start building their better team straight away. There wasn't a lot of time, just one full training day before taking on a Scotland side who had everything to gain. They'd never beaten the All Blacks before and they believed Cardiff could provide the perfect opportunity. But for the All Blacks this was a chance to end the tournament as winners rather than losers and in the process remind the rest of the world that the All Blacks will come back sooner rather than later. The end of the All Blacks? I doubt it. It's just time for another beginning. Now the All Blacks have a chance here. Basham across to Tuigamala. He'll have Stanger on again. Lovely double round by Basham. Michael Jones trying to loom up in support. Got the pass, Jones. Preston. Little. Lovely break by Little. Terry Wright. Well, the referee has not awarded a try. Here's Kerwin getting a chance. Good work by Kerwin. Zinzan, this one's worked before. Good run by Brook. Walls a little. Those twinkling feet again. Close to the line. it across to Innes. Innes has Jones in support and away goes Michael Jones. What a great run from Jones. Can he link up? He has with Basham. Earl is there to take the pass. So there's Sinsan Brook now. On his own Brook looking for support. All Black Ford's arriving now. Now Basham. Walter Little finds Philpott. Philpott to right to the outside. Yeah, there we go.
always uh, very aware of the amazing support that we've had right through the whole time, right for the you know the, the years really, and um, we really we were obviously disappointed with the game, with, you know, on Sunday, and um, it was just great to get back and and just just uh, restore some of the All Black pride today. Yeah, well, that was the um, sort of the whole point of it. We like this was our third, our last game in it, and. Uh, like this morning, we didn't even have a backs didn't have a team meeting, you know, just the backs meeting. And JK said, "Like, we'll wait till we get to the ground, and you know, we'll have a chat in the changing room once we get in changing it." And, um, and so we got together, and he said, "You know, if the opportunity's there, then you've got to take it, you know, because this could be the future of all black rugby." There's a bit of talk about you know, guys not, you know, some not coming back to play uh, next year and um, a few of the guys got together and they said, you know, we'll you know, look at it this way, like we're the future of uh, New Zealand rugby and you know, if, you know, some of the older guys will be moving on, but if the younger guys don't come back, then, you know, where's New Zealand rugby going to be? So we got together and we had you know, a bit of a chat and said, you know, we'll, we've got our chance now with this game in Scotland and just got to go out there and show what we've got. When the band's finished playing your song the road isn't short, but it isn't so long All your thoughts become clear come in, come on, and the doubt is all gone Forget the rough seas Life's still a breeze Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing with the bus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.